I have a real treat for you guys today. We're going to go through a research report that came out from a research firm which digs into the math and the supply demand fundamentals of the uranium space and really gives some concrete analysis. And I can't wait to go through that. But first, let's look at uranium price action on the week. We had the URNM, North Shore Global Mining ETF, up 1.68% in line with the overall broader market, S&P 500 up 1.76%. So just still trading in line with the broader markets. Now, eventually we expect the uranium space to diverge exponentially bullish from the broader market, right? And why is that? Why do you think that is? It's because of the massively bullish underlying fundamentals. So first let's talk about this research report which John Quakes shared on Twitter, and it's from Canaccord Genuity, okay? Global equity research firm, came out on February 2nd, so brand new. First, let's look at its 2021 recap, okay? The uranium market in 2021 was dominated by financial players who clearly accelerated price discovery. We know this, Sprott, right? The spot price rose 40% in 2021 and peaked at an impressive $50. In our view, the recent rise in prices would not have occurred if there was not already a fundamental supply deficit. So guys, this is a gold mine of information, right? It's proving out the supply deficit thesis in uranium. Okay. In 2022, they expect some near-term volatility, but we remain bullish on our outlook for uranium. Demand for nuclear power continues to increase as the global transition to clean energy gains momentum. At the same time, primary mine supply sets at a 12-year low. That's a long time. And while uranium prices have recovered significantly to over $40 per pound, we don't believe this is sufficient to incentivize mine restarts and investments in new mine supply. Additionally, we believe the cycle still has a long way to go. Okay, so they're going to prove all this out using graphs. So check out this chart, which they provide in their report, Canaccord Genuity. Okay, supply and demand forecast. You can see... The red line is uranium demand, right? So that's the level that we need to meet, okay? Whereas the bars in this chart represent supply. So the dark navy blue is uranium primary production straight out of mines. Gray is secondary supply, which comes from, you know, secondary sellers, Wall Street firms reselling their options and things like that that flow through on financial exchanges. And then the light blue represents the forecasted new mine supply. Okay, you can see that we're in a severe structural deficit in 2021, 2022, nowhere close, right? 2023, still nowhere close, 2024, still in a deficit, 2025, it starts to touch. Okay, so that is why the experts I brought on the show believe that we're in for this unbelievable bull run in the coming years, because this is not expected to, this gap is not expected to fill in the next few years. So very, very exciting. Okay. So we always talk about on the show, the positive developments for demand. Let's see what this report says. Positive news continues to roll through the markets as governments affirm their commitment to nuclear power as a key tool for decarbonization. China announced plans to build 150 new reactors by 2035. The EU has elected to classify nuclear as green. And Japan's new prime minister has reconfirmed his support for additional reactor restarts. Just as in 2021, we expect the Sprott Uranium Trust to play an influential role in the spot market this year, we estimate that the trust has $2.4 billion in buying power left on its $3.5 billion at the money facility. The trust is also targeting a New York Stock Exchange listing in 2022, which could act as a key catalyst for investor inflow. So these, this trust is a black hole of money. They're going to absorb money and just buy more and more and more uranium off the market. So this is just truly massive. They're proving that there's a supply deficit. So the more money that goes into this, the more of a squeeze there's going to be in the spot price, which is going to pump all the miners. Now, this is something massive that we haven't talked about as much on the show, but we believe that 2022 could be the year that utilities return to the long-term market in a material way. Total contracted volumes were 36% higher in 2021, and we've seen a growing number of RFPs on market in addition to increasing off-market activity. These long-term contracts are being signed at higher price levels. The term price was 23% in 2021, the largest single year since, 20, since 2007. 
And the beauty of all this to summarize is that supply, which, which is proven by that chart, is not in a position to front run demand. Primary mine supply remains under significant pressure, a situation that has only been compounded by recent COVID disruptions and ongoing supply chain issues. We estimate that over the last six years, uranium production has declined by 24% to 122 million pounds. And following years of insufficient incentive pricing, we believe supply is not in a position or willing to front run demand. In our view, higher pricing signals are needed to bring idle production back online. And this production alone will not be enough to satisfy long-term demand. This is the, the scenario in a nutshell, backed up by reports from the World Nuclear Association. I will link the full report in the description of this video. Here's a great graphic showing the primary mine supply and how it's been on the decline in recent years. So do you guys see from 2016 down to 2021, just the plummeting supply of uranium. So as commodities investors, this is all you want to see, right? You want to see these structural supply demand deficits. The prior chart proved that demand is much higher than supply. So we love seeing that shrinking supply, right? Digging deeper into this report, because there's a lot of awesome insights in here. The U.S. Congress is set to consider the Biden administration's Build Back Better initiative, which in its current form includes a tax credit to keep nuclear power. We've talked about that. We note that Exelon's Bryan and Dresden plants were already saved from early closure in 2021 with nearly 700 million in new state subsidies. That's a lot of money. We would not be surprised to see the U.S. grant more 20-year lifetime extensions. Again, unforecasted extensions, which would surprise the market. Here is just one article I came across. California urged to keep nuclear plant open to meet climate goals. Nearly 80 scientists and academics, including a former U.S. Energy Secretary on Thursday, urged Governor Gavin Newsom to delay closure of California's remaining nuclear plant to comply with state laws and fighting global warming. So California is trying to close this nuclear power plant and they're getting pressure. The threat of climate change is too real and too pressing to leap before we look, said a former U.S. Energy Secretary. Considering the, our climate crisis, closing the plant is not only irresponsible, the consequences could be catastrophic. They're also getting pressure from the federal government, right? We know the federal government's extremely bullish. U.S. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm send, said in a Reuters interview in November that she'd be willing to talk with California officials about the possibility of keeping it open once the federal government makes progress on dealing with nuclear waste, an issue for which there is no permanent fix. So this is really interesting, right? California being pressured, again, not forecasted to keep this online, but we're going to get probably some surprises here um, as states keep these plants online. So just extremely, really exciting bullish fundamentals for this stuff. For the first time since the Fukushima Daiichi incident in 2011, the International Atomic Energy Agency has revised its projections for nuclear power growth upwards. It's high case Scenario now forecasts a doubling of nuclear capacity by 2050 versus 2021, which represents a 10% increase over prior forecasts. So guys, just so exciting. Look at this chart showing the supply demand gap. This is like the sweet spot for commodity investors. This is where you want to be. Probably in 2027, 2026, once that supply starts to meet demand, that is going to get a little uh, hairy. You may want to take some profits there. But for now, in the coming years, literally what this is proving is that the spot price has to go up. It's the only way. So like as far as wanting a sure thing in investing, it's pretty much being handed to us on a silver platter here, right? Spot pr price has to go up. Someone prove me wrong on that, please. That'd be amazing to get another opinion here. But uh, I, I don't see any other way around it. Thank you guys for watching. This report is extremely exciting. Can't wait to go through more of these as they come out and just stay on top of these developments of this extremely exciting niche contrarian sector. This discussion is for informational purposes only. Please consult a certified financial planner when making any decisions about investing and do your own research before making any decisions. Investments are risky and you can lose lots of money in them.